Hi everybody, this is Gregor from Personas and today is all about bandmarkers, one of the most powerful audio editing tools in Studio One. You can use it to time stretch your vocals to get them really tight, to align backing vocals to them or even get that guitar part spot on. Now because Studio One is all about customizability and finding your own workflow, there's a multitude of ways you can work with these band markers. But before I gotta talk about the workflows that I come up with over many, many years of working with band markers that work the best for me, we're gonna go back to the very beginning, talk about the audio band menu, all the parameters that we find there, and then on that foundation, build a workflow. So I have a vocal here from one of my productions I did back in 2018. And as you're gonna hear, the vocals are not quite on the beat, which they actually have to be in this kind of genre. Have a listen. Now, you probably were already able to hear it, and even if you don't understand German, you can at least visually see that some of these sharp consonants that have to be on the beat are either a little bit late or um, also sometimes a bit too early. Now, the audio band markers are a fantastic way to adjust that because they will essentially allow us with the band tool or the audio band menu, which I'm gonna talk about in just a sec, to set these band markers at the beginning of each of these consonants or transients and then correct the timing accordingly, like so. Now one thing you might already wonder is what this different color means that just popped up as I'm um, shifting the time between these phrases around. Essentially red means that something is being stretched, so this phrase is now longer than it originally was. And if something is green, then it's compressed, meaning it's shorter than it was originally. And the darker the color gets, basically the more likely it is that you're gonna hear some actual artifacts in the material. All right. Now before we talk about the manual procedure of doing this, let's look at how we can do this automatically because Studio One can actually help us quite a bit in this process. So when you start doing this, you wanna click on Audio Bend to open up the Audio Bend menu. And first of all, on the left, I gotta talk you through each of these really quickly, you have the detection section. Now in the detection section, you have two different modes to set a threshold for the amounts of band markers detected in this material. It can either be standard or sensitive. By default, it's set to standard and then you click analyze. And now you can adjust the threshold here to basically um, change the amount of band markers detected. Now, each of these blue lines that you see here are time handle points that we can move around or quantize to get the syllables of this performance in a better timing. You don't want too many of these because they would really quickly add up and make for a couple of pretty nasty artifacts probably. You kind of want to set as few as possible but at really key points in the performance that have to be on the beat so that the original timing, the overall performance is maintained in its authenticity but the parts that really matter are dead tight. Now, if you need to be that selective, I would argue that the sensitive algorithm is a better choice than the normal one, which is a bit too coarse. So you probably wanna go with the sensitive algorithm here and set that to a threshold where you have just the right amount of band markers. Another key setting is nested right in the following section, the track section, which is the time stretch algorithm. Because the time stretch algorithm that you're gonna choose for your track is gonna have an enormous impact on the actual sound of your recording in the end. For instance, time stretch drums would sound very, very good on percussive material that you wanna quantize and get on the grid. But for vocals, either sound or solo would work much better. Tape would be pretty good if you want to preserve the quality of the original material without introducing any artifacts. But tape will, just like on an old tape machine, make your pitch go up and down depending on whether you're making something longer or shorter. And while that doesn't introduce any artifacts and doesn't degrade the quality of your audio, that still introduces pitch shifting, which would sound very weird on your vocals. It would work great on drums though. Then we also have an option to um, assign a guide for a group here, which is kind of cool if you have also backing vocals, like in this section here, where you want to detect your band markers and you want to do that in relation to the actual guide track. So if you wanted to do that, you could just um, with shift click, select both of these tracks and then right click 
group the selected tracks. And as soon as you do that, you will be able to set a guide. And this guide will essentially influence the way the band markers are going to be detected on the dub vocal. Then you can choose the quantizing strength. So once all your band markers are set, you can hit quantize and then according to your current grid setting, um, those band markers will be moved to the nearest point in time on the grid, like this. Um, here it actually measured that the previous beat is a bit closer than the following one, so that's why this band marker got moved back. Now in this case the band marker got moved exactly on the grid because the strength is set to 100%, but we can also make that more gradual if we just want to get it a bit closer to the correct timing. Nonetheless, this is kind of an automatic process, which is a bit of a hit and miss, so uh, let's see how well it did for us this time around. It's already pretty good, actually surprisingly good, but I have to say that I much prefer to do this manually these days because it just gives me way more control. Sometimes I like, you know, to get a couple of band markers in there, set it at the real key locations and then uh, work with the band tool up here to delete a couple of these and correct them manually. But I found an even better way to do this um, over the number of years that I was tight stretching vocals. So I want to show you that right now. So instead of using this um, detection uh, menu over here, what I started to do is use the tap key in Studio One to jump to the next transient um, of your performance. And I combined that with a keyboard shortcut to add a bend marker at cursor location. So you can use the tap to transient to go to your next syllable, then you can, you know, insert a bend marker, then you can set another one and then another one. But the disadvantage that I found over time is that I can't really hear where I'm setting these bend markers. I have to do it visually. And how do I know that this is the correct spot? I have to double check this by hitting play every time. And before you know it, you're kind of starting and stopping like a maniac trying to nail down the position of each transient. I didn't find that a sustainable way to go about this. So here's what I did. I knew that I liked the tap to transient and insert a bend marker workflow. I really thought that was cool. But I didn't like that I didn't actually hear where I was putting it, so I always had to double check this stuff. And here is where one of the most underestimated tools of Studio One come in, the listen tool. The listen tool allows us to directly monitor something at the position where we click. So Naturally, if we just position it close to the transient, then we never have to double check if it's actually at the correct position. We know it's at the correct position. Also, one thing, if you have watched a couple of tutorials of mine, um, you know that I like to cut down on redundancies. And one of these redundancies in this workflow is obviously tapping the transient and then adding the bend marker. I'm always doing these commands in succession, so this is a moment where I should stop and consolidate it into one key command instead. And that's what a macro can do for us. Basically, a macro is just a succession of two or more key commands, nothing more, nothing less. And I've already prepared this for you. So if you go to your Studio One browser down here and you click on the Clouds tab, <laughs> just zooming back and forth, uh, and you double click on Personas Exchange to log in, you can just search for go to and hit enter. And there you're going to find my macro right here, which is called go to next transient and insert bend marker. Then you just hit install. And as soon as you've done that, you can assign it to your keyboard shortcuts. So you just go to Studio One keyboard shortcuts, you search for go to, there it is. And then you just assign that to any keyboard command that you want. So in my case, I'm going to go for command in one because that happens to be free, which is not a given on my keyboard. Cool. So let's try that out in action because on the first transient of a performance, I always want to have a bend marker so that I can't shift something uh, backwards in time or forward by accident, right? So just instead of hitting transient and then adding the bend marker, just hit one command instead and it's glorious, worked right away. Great, so now let's use that in conjunction with the listen tool and see how quickly and how confidently we can get this performance together with only the bent markers that we really require and not a single one more. 
So once again, apologies for this performance being in German, but I think together with the metronome, you will be able to follow my decisions quite nicely. So let's engage the listen tool. Let's close the browser for some more screen real estate. And here we go. So this would be Vardas Tor. That, that's definitely uh, two transients. They have to be very tight, I think. So this is exactly the point where I would locate with my listen tool. And then just hit um beautiful macro like this and then do that here cool so now you already have these three right here perfect then, then i need the next one here one here I want two of those here because I want that to be really tight. Then definitely here. 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 And here. Right. So that was already the entire verse that took me maybe uh, 30 seconds to a minute to do. And as soon as we got that, we simply hit Q for quantize and that should take care of the job for us. Um, hitting quantize is essentially the same thing in this case as opening up the audio menu and hitting apply here in the quantize section. It's just faster to do it this way. So let's give that a listen. Perfect. And of course, we can still go in and do some manual corrections from here, which aren't all that many, to be honest. So just go to the Bend tool. And then while holding down Option on a Mac or Alt on the Windows PC, you just um, reposition these when necessary. Okay, so just go ahead, put that here, a bit over here, a bit over here. It's a bit too late. And that's basically how you can work your way through the entire performance.